Today is a really special video for me personally. I started tracking income on YouTube many years ago, knowing I'd hit impressive monthly income numbers at some point and wanted to have documented proof every step of the way. A big milestone number was hit in October. I'm also going to use this video to share with you the struggles that I have managing multiple businesses. And then at the end, I'll share the total income and expenses. We'll start with the YouTube analytics so you can see the data from this channel. 5.6 million views in the month of October. Thank you for everyone tuning in. February was my low point this year, not even half a million views. I had to really get self-aware, try to improve the content, make it better. And I feel like this is the culmination, more than 10X increase in views within the same year. So I'm very thankful. I feel like I've earned it because I've worked really hard to get to this point. But at the same time, I rely on everyone watching the videos. So I thank you very much. Almost 750,000 watch time hours, over 40,000 subscribers, which is, is nuts. You know, 3,500 in February. And then here we are, 41,000 in the month of October. And it might be the similar, it might be similar in the next two months, which by the end of the year, we could be over 350,000. It's hard to believe. Now the number we've all been waiting for, over $44,000 in the month of October, quite a bit more than the previous months this year. But still, it's been a steady increase and uh, all the way up to 44,000. Now let's check out the videos that performed really well. This was the big one, the McBroom one. Millionaires get foreclosed on 1.2 million views in the first week. That was a video that performed better than any other video I've had. And for those of you YouTubers out there, you can see the average view duration, which is generally around 55 to 60% for the best performing videos. That's a number I cherish. I really focus on how can I keep people engaged with the content. So these are pretty interesting numbers that they're all over 100,000. These are the top videos just within the month of October. October. Let's check out the reach. 1.8 million unique viewers. I really like that number because that's the amount of people that are watching one of my videos for the first time, nearly 2 million. So that's a lot of people now becoming aware of my content. And a certain number of those will stick around and watch some more. And then a certain number of those will become subscribed. 4.2% click through rate across the channel. That is uh, general. That's right around the same for my channel from every, every single month seems to be right around 4%. Now let's check out the traffic sources, 84% from Browse and Suggested. What I found really interesting though is the WhatsApp is 25% from the external. I wonder if people were passing around my content in WhatsApp groups. It's entirely possible, that's my guess. Now let's check out engagement, eight minutes average view duration. My videos are generally 12 to 15 minutes, so eight minutes to me is really high. And that's indicative of creating content that is engaging and people want to stick around for. That's a number I very much focus on. 590,000 returning viewers. That's really high, up 26%. Let's check out. I, I know some of you really like seeing the other channels that my audience watches. You'll probably recognize some of these. Another number I like to look at is the not subscribed versus subscribed. Not subscribed being so high at 75% means my videos were getting pushed to new audiences. If you're in the growth stage, that number is really important. I've seen it get as low for my channel as 60, 40, and maybe even like 55, 45. And that's when my channel was not getting pushed a lot. So you get a lot of returning viewers, but it's not getting pushed to new audiences. And let's check out the revenue numbers so that you can see the CPM and RPM of $8.17. This is a, a little bit boost. It'll be nice if that number can increase as Q4 gets into the uh, November and December buying season, because if those numbers go up, your income goes up really fast. My videos that take off are ones with lower CPM. That's kind of the trade-off. When you get the more viral videos, you get videos that are more broad, more broad audience, meaning the CPM and RBM will be a little lower. So that's the trade-off when you get a McBroom video that takes off and gets 1.5 million views in a couple weeks. It generally has a lower CPM. Where you can find the magic is when you can have a video that takes off as viral, trend hacking, you know, it's something that's, that's hot, and you get the CPM and RPM. That's how you really blow up on YouTube. I'm gonna quickly go through what I have going on behind the scenes with YouTube. I got threatened with a lawsuit. It was quite frivolous and it was actually hilarious. There was a video in the electronic commerce drama series that I shared with you all. It was a six part series. Go check it out if you haven't. And part four got taken down because one of the subjects of the video did not care for it and complained to YouTube. Well, that subject threatened to sue me behind the scenes. It was very, very funny. And I've already contacted a lawyer in California. If they decide to sue, it'll be hilarious and I'll for sure make a video on it. An update on my lawsuit against Wealthy Inc. Derek Moneyberg's company is called Wealthy Inc. So Derek Moneyberg is the guru. He's big on Instagram. You've probably seen him. He is suing me for defamation for a video I made on him. We have not yet filed the motion to dismiss. I'm hoping so because I think it's a frivolous lawsuit. And when that, uh, when our lawsuit gets dismissed, I'm saying when because I think it will be, then I'll get all of my legal fees coming back to me, which will be much appreciated. The McBroom videos took off. It was really cool to see a video take off the way it did. 
I've never had a video get as many views as the one McBroom video that hit. It was like a million views within the first couple days. I've never experienced that before. It was it was really cool to see, honestly. So the weekly compilation is something I've been considering. I very much appreciate everyone that sends me ideas and scams and you know, look at this guy. A lot of the stuff you guys send me is actually not, it's not, there's not enough there to make a full 12 minute video because I'm only releasing three videos a week. But what I would like to do is create a, a compilation, like a weekly thing where I can, I can take some of your ideas that are good for two minutes and I can make some jokes at their expense and uh, kind of report on news and make it fun and exciting so that you could see some news and some interesting drama stuff but I would be able to maybe tell five or six stories and make that one video where I could take a lot of the stuff you send me, compile it into one video, and I think that would work for both all of you who want me to expose something you have noticed, and for me, I would be able to make a full video out of it. Jack Selby, the co-host of the Ice Coffee Hour podcast with Graham. I was a guest on it a few weeks ago. We've been chatting behind the scenes about house hacking. Well, he actually bought his first house and had a housewarming party. It was really fun to go to, it was really fun. All those guys behind the scenes, if you follow Graham, I know, you know, Alex, Jack, Graham, all these guys behind the scenes, his girlfriend Macy, a lot of them, they're all really cool in person. So I just wanted to share, since I know some of you watch his channel and see him publicly, I also want to share that privately, he's actually really down to earth, super cool. I met Andre Jick for a minute. I don't really watch his stuff too much, but uh, I know since some of you watch him, he seemed pretty cool. I didn't really have a long conversation with him. Uh, now onto real estate. I had fire damage at my first house hack, dealing with insurance now. It's quite, kind of annoying. Uh, unfortunately, when you do nice things for tenants, sometimes it really bites you. And this one really bit me, a dude suffering from mental health issues lit something on fire in my house and now I'm dealing with insurance and hoping they'll cover it. Long story short, I'm not gonna share the full story. It was just annoying dealing with insurance. I'm sharing some of the big expenses I've had to deal with this month because I know a lot of you you know, wanna get into real estate. This is the ugly side where you've gotta to make tough decisions and spend a lot of money. Had to get a new stove and washer. Had I got a mini split for the garage in my first house hack. It is a, it's kind of a separate unit. And so I wanted a mini split, which is like a mini HVAC unit. Cost me $7,000 to do the HVAC in the house and then the new mini split. And then I had to hire an electrician. It's a whole process. Had a tenant's phone get lost during the fire damage. So I had to cover that. Process server to evict that tenant. It's just a lot of expenses sometimes with real estate. Real estate agent had a couple things. I'll talk about this more in the November video. Adam22 of No Jumper had a, an OnlyFans girl that out, uh, is out here in Vegas and needed a new place. I was able to connect them and find her a place to live with one of my connections. So I got some referral money from that. And then a friend purchased a house and I get a referral fee from that for being a real estate agent. Some of you out there who think about getting your real estate license, it's a benefit that you can refer people to your broker and get a cut for no work. E-commerce stores, I have three providers now. I'll talk about that in a minute when I show you the full income breakdown, but I just wanted to give you an update for those since I've shared that I do have three e-commerce stores. I did add a Facebook automation one. That's where you see provider number three, two automated stores for Amazon and one for Facebook. Affiliate marketing was something I used to be really uncomfortable with. Now I'm a little more comfortable sharing other people's courses or products if I really believe in them. So you may have noticed in some of my videos, I do promote someone else's course. I do believe if you're going to buy a course, I would rather it be a course I know is good from someone I know and trust. And then also, I think there are good courses out there that can really help people. So I just wanted to mention it since you might notice in some of my videos. And then Turo, I'm making too much money to justify doing it right now. I'm looking for a partner. I believe I may have found a friend I just, uh, it doesn't make any sense right now having one car and putting it on Turo and dealing with it. I just make too much on YouTube. That needs to be my focus. I know I made a video talking about doing Turo. I've postponed it for now. I'm looking to do that probably in the future. I'll just get a small fleet and have someone manage it. I'll go get the cars. They manage the operations. So if you are in Vegas and want to do something with Turo, please let me know. And lastly, before I show you the full income, I just want to say thank you for every email and DM. I do rely on everyone for the stories and topics. So I very much appreciate every single person helping me out with finding ideas and topics. Now onto the profit and loss statement. We're gonna start with the YouTube AdSense, over 44,000. Look at that margin, only $300 in expenses. That's an estimate, but it's not much. The margins are super high. I still have some Patreon income coming in, so thank you for those of you who still support me. Batch Driven and Batch Leads, it's a software for real estate investors that I don't really promote much. I do on real estate videos, because I do believe if you are an investor, that is the best software to use if you're looking for off-market leads and, and calling people and trying to find off-market deals. So I do promote that every now and then, and some people sign up and they buy leads and all the associated expenses within that platform and I get a cut. I have a few different income sources within real estate. I do have the cash flow and equity. Equity would be the principal pay down of the mortgage. Cash flow is, that's the gross income that I receive from rents. And uh, you see a lot of expenses. I had a lot of expenses this month. 
over $15,000, just various expenses. I'm spending a lot of money this year because real estate to me is a long-term game. I'm totally cool fixing stuff today because I don't really need the money. So I can put money in the properties today, make sure my tenants really enjoy their experience living in one of my houses, and then I'll enjoy the cash flow in the future and the appreciation of the property as I make it better today. It'll maintain its value over the lifetime of my ownership. Here's the uh, stores. These stores are long-term plays. I can't stress it enough. For those of you, I do know some of you might want to sign up for these stores. I can't say they're like some huge roaring success today. To me, they're something that you should look at for the first 12 months. You shouldn't care at all about the numbers. This should be a two or three year uh, decision for you to have passive income over the lifetime, but it's not money that you need today. Combined for those three stores, I've spent $42,000 on the upfront fee. And then for me, I'm just hoping it pays off long term. If it doesn't, it was worth the risk. If it does, great, it's passive income that requires no work. And I personally have like 74,000 in business credit available that I'm not using. So I figured with the e-commerce stores, what I was hoping for is a couple of these stores just take off and, and sell a lot. Even if the profit margin isn't there, if it's like 2% or 5%, if you're selling a lot, you'll get a lot in cashback rewards. So my hope is that in two years, and the reason why I invested 42,000 so far is because down the road, I'm hoping that I'm able to hit 100,000 a month in sales. Again, that's gross profit, not net margin. And if I'm able to make two, five, 10% off that, now we're talking real income. And that would be combined, by the way. So 100,000 a month is entirely possible between three stores. So that's what I'm looking at two to three years down the road. I had mentioned Turo postponed. I got the Tesla in a satin black wrap and I got it tinted, which cost about 4,000. I also had to hire an electrician to get the, the supercharger here at the house, which charges much faster than the one that they provide. And so in total, that was about $4,300 for that. It's not really, it's weird because it's not like a business that's up and running yet, but it is, I did want to provide the expenses associated with the car because I did plan on doing Turo and I've spent all this money. Anyway, $54,531 gross income for the month of October against $25,000 in expenses for net income of a little over $29,000. I used to have dreams of making $25,000 a month and now I'm comfortably spending it. It's pretty wild how, how fast life can happen when you're in like the hyper growth stage like I've been. But anyway, I can't thank you enough. Uh, a big part of this is clearly YouTube. That's like the one, the one thing that's going really well for me in life as I've had, I've dealt with a lot of setbacks outside of YouTube. But uh, YouTube has been clearly the breadwinner, over fifty-four thousand dollars in income, and this might grow. This could get, this could get a lot higher. So I'm very appreciative for all of you who are watching, and uh, thank you so much because couldn't have done this without you. Thank you.